are people telling their uh, retail investors and retirees and stuff like that? I mean, that's that's an entire that's a generation of people living at low interest rates. It is, and I think most people are saying that what you need to do if you're risk averse is to go shorter on uh, the yield curve. Uh, right. You know, duration is low. Make no money. Uh, make no money. Credit quality is high and wait it out um, and go get a second job. Right. <laughs> yeah. do, you buy the, do you buy the tips and then pay the you negative? Pay pay ne the negative? Back. Um, but there's another interesting thing about, you know, a lot of times um, high income investors and retirees, they, they like to invest in municipal bonds. And what we're witnessing there is, you know, a, a disruption, I think, of, a, of another order, especially in, in the wake of the president's uh, budget proposal in terms of eliminating AMT uh, and also in terms of eliminating the tax exemption on uh, municipal bonds. Now, of course, I think things will be grandfathered, but I think we're about to see a whole other disruption perhaps in the municipal bond market. So, Lee, you know, that brings us to kind of other types of bonds, you know, munis, corporates, high yields, you know, what's the ripple effect that we're seeing um, from this policy and, and, you know, what can we do? What, well, I what's mean, the danger uh, there? The biggest problem that I see is that well, I don't think we're at a critical juncture now. We have this huge amount of money that's going into the junk bond markets. Um, I mean, last year, we, everybody starts selling their treasuries and starts buying intermediate corporates. But the junk bond market, uh, you know, that's where the action is. That's where the inflows are. Uh, there's two basic problems. One I'm not that worried about right now, and one I'm very worried about. Now, I have junk bonds for my clients, okay? But you have to understand, number one, Junk bonds are junk for a reason. You know, these are these are you know they're called junk bonds. If somebody tells this high yield, that means junk. They're they're not good companies. They have problems financing. They have to pay a very high rate, and it, it burns into their bottom line. Okay, it's just like the same type of problem you, you had in Greece a couple of years ago. If, you know, if the interest rate's too high, you're not going to make any money. And yet their rates now are what six, seven percent if you're buying the, the indexes it, it, of the mutual mean, funds. Yeah, I mean, I mean that seems buy... fairly safe, right? Compared well, to but, sixteen, but, seventeen. But here's the thing: the, the idea that that a, a, a medium to longer duration junk bond is, is seven or eight percent. They say, well, that seems safe. It's not like they're paying fifteen <laughs> percent. Uh, but I think that the what, what people have to understand: junk bonds have a high correlation to the equity, you know, to the stock market. Look at August of last year. You know, stocks do this, and what do junk bonds do? They do this. They follow, and they have for some period of time. I know years ago they, they didn't have as much correlation for those who were like trading them back then. But right now, if you buy a basic ETF or even a junk bond fund, I mean, when the stock market goes, I mean, it's going to follow the stock market about 60% of the time. Very high correlation. Now, the longer you go out in duration, the more that volatility starts to seep in. So if you're going after junk bonds to try to chase yield, or you get the yield, what the problem is, you don't get your diversification. You know, you lose the whole point of modern portfolio theory. You lose the whole point of that pie chart to broker show. You lose the whole point of having stocks and bonds. And I think that's something that people don't realize. And so if they look at their portfolio in a time where equity markets are going down, well, geez, their bond markets are good. Their bond stuff is going down. And they thought, well, are my bonds supposed to go up when my stocks are going down? Second thing is, is you know, are these companies going to survive? I'm looking at stuff that's maybe three to four years in the junk bond markets. I think companies are going to be able to fund that for the next few years. When you start going five, six, seven years out, these crappy companies, I'm not taking the bet that they're going to be able to refinance because I don't know what rates are going to be seven years from now. I mean, if you did, I mean, great, I'd, I'd pay you 50 bucks, you could tell me, but I mean, you know, a couple <laughs> years out, you know, we're kind of, we can guess. Three or four years, we, you know, we BS a little bit and say, oh, yeah, it's going to be this or that. Once you get five, six, seven years out, I mean, it could be a very different world. We could have a, a world where you know, Frontier Communications can't redo their senior subordinated debt, blah, blah, blah. But yet you always see in the, in the mutual funds you know, that the, 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 the writings that the default rate's only 2% or 1.5%. Oh, yeah, because right? the Fed's giving free money to everybody. Of course the default rate's low. Plus, we're coming off you know, a time where you know, anything that was going to default, except for Kodak, you know, did, <laughs> except for that one big component, you know, it did default over the last few years. So you're, you're getting out of the 08 crisis, going you know, out, you know, this big recovery. We've been in bull market for three years. So most companies, they've had a major increase in their earnings, and corporate profits are record high. So these, like, junky companies, even the triple Cs, you know, all of them, for the most part, their credit quality, you know, is up just by, you know, de facto that we're coming off such a low base. And so it's less likely, plus with the free money, 
that they don't have to borrow it 15%, they can say, hey, you know, you're like the worst company on earth. You know, we'll lend you money for, you know, 8%. And people say, oh my gosh, that's 6% above a treasury. It's like, hey, it's only 8%. You know, try to turn a profit, make a go out of it. Yeah. So I think that there's some of that working in. And also, we got rid of the weaker players, you know, a few years ago.